welcome to Great British Ghosts. Today I've come to the ancient market town of Devizes, a place where local traders have been selling their goods every week since the 12th century. Later on I'm going to be going on a haunted tour of Devizes itself, but first I've come to the Black Swan, an 18th century coaching inn that's reputed to be one of the most haunted places in the West Country. The Black Swan was built in 1732, but its cellars date back to the 1600s, when it was owned by a notorious highwayman, whose ghost is said to still haunt the cellars. Over the years, the Black Swan has been used as a pub, a hotel, and even a court of judgment. And right in front of it, here in the Market Square, is where some people say that justice was carried out, the Old Town Gallows, in which case the Black Swan certainly has seen its fair share of grisly deaths. Now it's said that room number four of the Black Swan, which is the one on the top left, is reputed to be one of the most haunted bedrooms in the country. We've had lots of happenings, even that I've experienced, We've had bed shakings, uh, electrical equipment turned on, taps that start running in the night for no reason, toilets flushing, residents that have no history at all of the Black Swan that have come from other countries that have experienced being strangled in the night, so much so that they've actually woken up with their own hands round the throat. The pub's manager, Bonnie, who's had many ghost sightings over the years, agreed to show me around. So this is room four. Yes, this is the famous the room famous four. Room. Yeah. Here we go. Well, it looks like a very nice room, a very sort of normal room. It doesn't yeah. look like a haunted room. No, been a redecorated. It didn't actually look like this when we, come, when we moved in. It was a lot more old-fashioned, old-fashioned curtains and stuff, but we thought we'd update it anyway. So what are the stories? Because there are quite a few. There is quite a few stories in here. Quite a few people have said quite similar things as well. One of the most scariest ones that I find quite disturbing, really, is the strangulation on the beds. We had a American girl that came over to stay, didn't know anything about the hotel whatsoever. Come down for breakfast, she looked a little bit upset, a bit drained, and my mum said to her, is everything all right? She was like, oh, I had the strangest dream last night that I was getting strangled. Then I woke up in the morning, woke up and I actually had my hands around my neck. No way. And she was really, really disturbed by it, but she's not actually the first person to actually have that, that, um, what's the word? That dream? N uh, that dream or that uh, event going on. Yeah, she's so not the first person. people have had that strangling yes, and felt. Not, I mean, not necessarily the strangling. We've had a few people that have been breathless, found it hard to get the breath, but it all kind of merges into to that. There was a big fire in room four, and the young girl was actually trapped in room, flo room four, and she couldn't get out, and she was crawling, uh, crawling at the wall and screaming, and actually, of, you know, unfortunately was burnt alive because she had no escape from, from that room. I stayed in here about a year and a half ago. It's the only time I've ever stayed in this room. And I heard like a scratching noise. And I thought it kind of woke, it woke me up. I thought, no, no, oh, it's just my mind playing up because I've heard about the stories and stuff. But then next minute I heard it again. I was like, oh, what's that? So I stayed up a little bit and it just came worse and worse and worse. Literally like that, scraping down the wall, so distinctive. At first thought I was imagining it, it just could, that could not be possible because this is when I didn't believe in any of the stuff going on here. So I stayed awake, made myself wake up a bit and I could hear that, like that. Gee. And I was just like, oh gosh. But you know when you, uh, you put your cover over your head, go sleep, just go sleep, it's probably nothing. Then I found out about the story of the young lady who was apparently trapped in this room and tried to claw herself away. And then it clicked, oh, okay then, maybe that was that. And it just freaked me out a little bit and I won't stay in here again. Let's go. <laughs>
we were doing a vigil uh, with a young group of girls uh, and one was getting quite um, hysterical and in the end I had to put a close to the vigil immediately because she was so distressed and what she was actually saying was that there was a person standing by the bed and she could feel the person with her left, ha left hand and the left hand was burning. When we actually put the lights on, her hand, her left hand, was just dripping with sweat. The room was quite cold, but her left hand was dripping with sweat. Um, we did have a thermometer reading with us, and as we put the probe to the spot where her hand was, it went from 19 degrees right the way up immediately to 28 degrees. As soon as we moved the probe away, the probe just dropped straight back down to 19. But it's not just the guest rooms where ghosts have been seen. The hotel's cellars are also reported to be haunted. Oh, just mind your step as you come down. So when's the last time you came down here? Um, we came down here uh, probably yesterday to get some ice, but I absolutely hate it. <laughs> I will not do it unless I really have to. I'll either send Chris down or one of the bar staff, really. But this, this bit is the bit that's used a lot. It's this next bit, isn't it? Yeah, this next bit's awful. I've never actually been in this room. When vigils and everything's gone on, I've actually stood here. You're actually holding yeah. back now, aren't you? Yeah, Come. I really am. Do you want me to go first? Yeah, go on. Oh, it's a bit of a damp smell. I'm, I'm actually shaking. Really? I am actually you shaking, well. yeah. I'm actually shaking. This is awful. Why are you shaking? Because I, I don't can... know. And I just feel that, yeah, it's not the most pleasant place to be because it's dark and it's damp and it's... Do you not get a bad feeling? I'm li actually shaking. This is awful. It's just old. I mean, you look at it and you think, I would not want to stay in there. And that's in the day of a night. <laughs> I, I, I can't say about... If Yvonne's said it's been in there of a night because she takes people around, but of a night when I actually go in the cellar on my own, I can't think of one instance I've had to go in there, and I wouldn't volunteer to go in there of a night on my own. It's, um, it's well, just really, really strange. I've stopped vigils now in the, in the cellar because, um, to be honest with you, it just freaks me out. I'm just so worked up, and for about two or three days after, I cannot sleep. I've got things going through my head for things that have happened or how I felt, and I will not go in that, that part anymore. I do remember one of the biggest screams I've heard is apparently when they heard gallops of a horse run from there and apparently he went straight through into that wall and you actually heard no him like the way. last last gallop go through, yeah, through to that wall. And, and what, what were these used as historically? I mean these, if they've got loads of different, if you can see, you can see someone's oh. caught away there, loads of different alleys that actually lead out of devices. They must have been used, I think, for storage, for cells, but yeah, I think there's about, oh, I don't know, 10 tunnels that actually lead all the way out of devices. Yeah, I mean, this, this is the oldest part of the hotel, back into about the 15th century, I think. Unless you're there, you can't believe what you hear. You can't believe the sound of these horses' hooves galloping, going through the wall. You can't believe seeing a figure of a man standing in the corner and it just, it just free, you just freeze and you're thinking to yourself, no, it's, it's, it's because it's dark, it's because it's spooky, it's because we're doing a visual, but I think deep down you know you, you have seen something, you know you've heard something. Bonnie, you've been down here, you know, a couple of minutes now. <laughs> Have you stopped shaking? No! Are you serious? Are you yeah, honestly, shaking? I'm serious. I don't like it in here at all. I'm just doing this for you, Michaela. <laughs> <laughs> to be quite honest, I, don't, to be, I won't be coming back in here at all. Really? Yeah, it's making me sweat, my forehead sweating. It's just not nice at all. With everything that's gone on and the other person's experiences, there's definitely got to be something that is unexplainable. There's too many things happen. There's too many different individuals' experiences of things happening. I'm not so much a skeptic I was. I really believe there is something, but 
I, I, I can't explain. To be honest, I didn't believe in ghosts, didn't believe in anyth anything at all until I come here and it's just things that can't be, can't be explained. It's just strange. I don't know if I believe in ghosts or poltergeists or whatever. It's just things that are unexplained. I need to get you out of here. I know, yeah. <laughs> You've done well. Oh, thank you. Or well, should we just spend the night down here? What do you no, think? not at all. I couldn't think of anything worse, to be honest. Right, goodbye, because I'll never see you again. <laughs> Well, it seems that hundreds of people have seen ghosts here at the Black Swan or have felt a presence or an energy that's unexplained. But what is remarkable is Yvonne, the landlady, has got those people to write down their experiences and draw pictures of what they've seen. There, there's a picture here of the lady in, in room four, and that's a picture that comes up a few times. And, and, and this is a picture here of, of what the highwayman might have looked like and, and what people think they've seen. And again, it comes up, it's a guy with a beard, with, with hair down to here, with a very old-fashioned looking face. And from what I've read, the same things come up time and time again. The rumour is that there's a highwayman um, that actually haunts the hotel uh, called um, Ambrose, Ambrose Saint Saintsbury. Saintsbury. And yes, we've, we've had residents and we've had people come on visuals that have actually seen him. In fact, um, like Mike said, we've been here two and a half years and after the ex we've done a visual, I actually uh, asked people to write down the feelings um, about different rooms, what they've so seen, if they've seen uh, a spirit or a ghost or a phenomenon, you know, in, in, if they could just draw a rough, rough picture. All the pictures are the same. Well, it's certainly been an interesting experience here at the Black Swan in Devizes. From phantom high women in the cellar to unexplained changes of temperature to strange stranglings that go on in room four. It's not surprising that the Black Swan is said to be one of the most haunted places in Britain. Devizes has been a thriving market town since the 12th century and it's certainly seen its fair share of battles and grisly deaths. So unsurprisingly, the ghost stories don't stop here at the Black Swan. There are plenty more in the town itself. In fact, Devizes is known as one of the UK's ghost hotspots. The best time to hear those ghost stories is after dark. John Gervin is a local blacksmith who spent years researching the haunted history of Devizes. He agreed to take me on a tour of the town's most famous ghosts. Right, now the most recent ghost to have been seen has been seen right here. And it appears to be a little old man in a shabby old overcoat. And he walked straight through that brick wall. And who saw that? Well, at least five different people at different times. Now I've been doing some research and I've got a photograph of what this was originally. It was taken from the top of the church tower there. And it was originally the entrance to a stable. And also we've got another photograph from the 1890s and it shows the stable hand. And what is he wearing? A shabby, shabby old, old overcoat. <laughs> and he's standing with his horse at that entrance. And he has been seen many times going straight through that brick wall. I believe there is a phenomenon here. Certain people say it's unexplainable, but I think it's a phenomenon which is a very strong presence. It's how you perceive it. I do believe there is a phenomenon here. Well, we're now going to St. Mary's Church Walk. Very haunted place. Is it a graveyard? It is a graveyard. It's a redundant graveyard. Now, it's along here. You can see it's quite narrow. Most devices people will not come along here at night. What is it that bad? 
It's reputed to be very haunted. So you're taking your life in your hands. Oh, well, thanks for telling me. <laughs> <laughs> it's a bit late now. <laughs> what did the ghosts do then? Are they right? Well, the whole ghosts? the whole story is that it dates to the time of the Civil War, 1643. Cromwell's troops were in town. Um, after the fighting, there are so many bodies to be buried. They use this land, the other side of the wall, as like an official, unofficial extension to the graveyard. However, they had more bodies than they did space to bury them. Consequently, a lot of them were buried upright. I know, standing room only. No way! <laughs> I didn't know you could bury people like that. I've never um, heard of that before. Short of space, short of space. And under our feet, there are many more bodies buried under the bathing slabs. This was the problem, yeah, they were buried upright. And people really do dislike coming along here at night. All sorts of hands grabbing feet and what have you. Is that for real? Reputedly, reputedly. Now, let me tell you something else. You know what youngsters say about paving slabs? Yeah. You should walk always on the slabs and never the cracks. <laughs> because should there be any spirits below, they can reach up between the cracks and grab you. <laughs> No, that is awful. That's really quite spooky. <laughs> well, that's, a, that's a children's thing, but obviously when you're in these conditions, adults think the same way. Walk carefully, choose your steps. I think ghosts are exciting. If you want to call them ghosts, I believe they're a historical phenomenon which brings the whole history of the town to life. This expression, ghost, is how you perceive a ghost. I believe they're a historical phenomenon with the facts of in, in history. They're real people from the past. There's an interesting um, uh, incident in the marketplace. In fact, we've got an illustration of a line cut of a man that was burnt to death, which is a terrible thought, isn't it? And what, what year was that? Um, 1523. And why was he burnt to well, death? It was, it was a, a very obscure religion he was involved with, uh, lollardry. He was a lollard. I've never heard of that. No, it's, it's, it's very, <laughs> we're talking early times, but a terrible thing to be burnt to death. So he must be a troubled soul. Well, we would have thought so, wouldn't you? <laughs> Has he ever been seen as a ghost? Well, the story goes that you can smell the burning. That's providing you're not too near the fish and chip shop round the corner. <laughs> you shouldn't <gasps> ask questions like that. If you look into the history of this phenomenon, some people get af afraid of the dark. You shouldn't be afraid. The historical facts are there, and you can prove all these stories and bring them together. But I believe there is a phenomenon which can be researched and made positive. Right, well, this is what we've come to see. This is the lockup. What, in there? Yes, there we are, look, the old town lockup. So this is obviously some kind of jail? Yes, yeah. Where does this date back to? Um, well, originally it dates back to the 1500s. Oh. Here we go. Gee, this really does oh, Yes, please. <laughs> right, down we go. Yeah, I'm not scared or anything, but it is a bit spooky. Right. Right, open the door. Right, you steady. Obviously it's not used these days, is it? Uh, no. <laughs> Gee. Oh, 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 no, stop it. Oh, that terrifies me. Sorry about that. Our jailer would have been a turnkey. He's our resident. And so do you have ghosts and spirits down here? Yes. Now, I want to show you the cell first. Look, this is another. This isn't the true cell. This is the outer cell. There's a great big keyhole here. So He's a bit spooky himself. Have a look in here. Right, here's our... Here's oh, my our word. Ray. Vagrant vagabond there, so pretty dismal. That is horrible, isn't it? He's got his straw to sleep on. His shoes have been taken away. I think he'd been throwing them through a shop window. I think that's the story about it. So he's our unfortunate person. But, but is there a haunted spirit in here? Yes, I'm going to show you the back wall. It's very sensitive. Let's have a look at it. It's this back wall here. Um, this very suspicious back wall, very similar to the black swan, it's been blocked up. Yeah. And here there is a presence, very sensitive. And with even figures been seen reputedly going through this wall at this point. So it's certainly got a lot of mystery. Why would this have been bricked up? 
Where would it have gone to? Well, this is one of the mysteries because um, the building is a lot earlier than it is to, if we see it today. It dates back to the 1600s, in fact, 1655. The building above has been a rebuild. Thomas Baldwin of Bath came along and reclad the building with stone. But um, the cellar obviously would have been um, dating back to its earlier period. So who knows what's behind there. John, there's been a lot of stories that, that we've been talking about, about ghosts and paranormal. Oh, I know, yeah. Why do you think there is so much of it in devices? Well, it's a very early town. Um, in fact, the word devices comes from the Latin divisas, castrumad divisas, castle at the division. So it's very 12th century the town is. So we've got a, a very early heritage. OK, so that's, that's it. You've seen the cell. Well, it's been a fascinating evening, but I don't think we want to spend too long down here, really. Not very pleasant at all, <laughs> is it? Let's hope right. someone hasn't locked that door. No, let's go very steady, all right? Well, I've been to Devizes many times before, but now I've seen it in a completely new ghostly light. Next time I come here, I'll be looking out for those soldiers who grab your ankles in the graveyards and that strange man in a shabby coat that disappears through walls. But for now, I'm off to bed. Guess where I'm staying? Room four. Wish me luck. See you next time. Bye-bye. In tonight's War Zone, celebrated war correspondent Kate Aidy reports on one of the most crucial engagements of World War II, El Alamein, the soldier's story in half an hour, after more great British ghosts, new to yesterday, next.